So this is a jungle cactus known as Lepismium cruxiform. And cruxiform typically just means cross-shaped, and I'm not sure if that's actually referring to the way that the leaves grow, or sorry, the leaves, the stems grow, where you actually cut it and then another one forms at a joint. Um, and maybe it could look like a little bit of a, a weird cross. But uh, this plant is typical and native to Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, those areas, and it is an epiphytic a cacti. So I have this growing in a little bit more of a, a mixture. I have some bark, but I kind of ran out of it. So I have a little bit more perlite and some bonsai mixture kind of mixed in with the, the grower's mix. Now, this is a plant that I have a tendency to neglect, and it's because it's one of those plants that I have hanging up a little bit higher from my ceiling. So it just takes a little bit more effort in order to be able to go and water it. So I've started trial plants, you know, the ones that are up there that are a little bit more resilient to neglect, and I have to say that this is one of them. Now, I had a Lepismium cruxiform actually growing a little bit closer to my southwest facing window. It can withstand a little bit more of that intensity, the light, but I would say giving it a little bit more dappled light, dappled shade, um, bright and direct light is going to be better for this plant. Now, I don't have this growing directly now in a, in a window per se. It's about three to four feet away from my northeast facing window, but I do have it under a light and it is not a grow light. I can't remember if it's an incandescent or it's an LED bulb that looks like an incandescent bulb, but that is actually growing under one of those lights and it seems to be growing well. But you will notice that it has some new uh, stems kind of growing off of it but they're a little bit thinner and that's probably because I'm not giving it as much light as possible or it actually might thicken up over time because sometimes with the epiphyllums and stuff, they start to stick out some thinner leaves and then they start to put in a little bit more girth. So I will just have to wait to see how this Lepismium starts to grow a little bit more. And I've had this, I think roughly this, this particular one for a little less than two years. So it's a relatively new plant, but it's one that, like I said, I'm growing in a different condition than my other Lepismium. And uh, I should say that some of the other ones that I featured here, I, I highlighted Pseudorypsa, if you're actually growing that in more highlight conditions, then it will start to redden up. And you could see that some of this is actually red. And if I had that in more, more of my southwest facing window, then it would probably redden up a little bit more there as well. Now, these are more epiphytic, which means they're growing on other things like trees. And you could give it a little bit more of an epiphytic mixture. So that means something that's a little bit more porous. I did run out of um, little wood chips for this, so I have a bit more like perlite and kind of bonsai mixture in here in order to be able to just amend the soil so that it's not so, like, so peaty, so it like maintains all that water. Because this is a plant that is really used to growing, um, drying out, and letting it dry out is exactly what I do. It's definitely a much more succulent variety of jungle cactus, so you shouldn't be shy in kind of lettering, letting it dry out, but you shouldn't let it dry out so much that um, it starts to turn crispy, which is another thing. Um, I, I feel like Ripsalis, certain Ripsalis species have a tendency to go crispier than this, uh, lip, this type of Lepismium. So that is just something to kind of like think about if you're growing jungle cactus in the home. Now, as far as a fertilizer goes, I, I kind of think that this could go either way because it has a little bit more of that cacti um, you know, qualities to it. So even giving it cacti fertilizer, like a 347 or 247 will probably be fine, but you could probably also give it a more well-balanced fertilizer. Um, you know, this is a plant that's not going to need a tremendous amount of fertilizer to begin with. So if you're just hitting it up in the growing season, even on a monthly basis, it's going to be great for this plant. And as far as pests, never had any of any kind on this plant. So that's always a good sign. And if you could see very closely here, if it's focusing on the plant and not on my, my fingers, you'll see that it has all these like little rootlets coming off of it. So that is actually how you're going to want to propagate this plant. You could actually cut it off at the stem, let it harden off for a bit, and then you could stick it into whatever growing medium that you want to do in order to be able to, to grow that plant up. And where that kind of cut off in, in that place will have happened, that's where it'll start to branch off and put out new growth. So you could see that this one right here was cut off and starting to put out some new growth from that callus. But otherwise, a pretty easy plant to get your hands on, um, especially if you wanna grow jungle cactus, I would say that this is a really good starter jungle cactus plant to, to go with. <laughs>